So the submission is yes, the discretion remains. It, the, the, the question simply is how is the court to exercise that discretion? And that then takes us, uh, my lord, to the particular circumstances of the current case. And might I just also say up front that my learned friend has conceded a concession if mala fides uh, were to exist. In other words, were, were this court to be of the opinion, and this is the state submission, that indeed this application which currently is before this court is mala fides in the sense that it is part of the Stalingrad defense and is meritless and is but one of those defenses which is raised continually without any prospects of success, knowing and, uh, by any proper reading of the law and is nevertheless proceeded with. So it's, it's, in, it's, done, um, uh, it's done in bad faith, it's done to delay in that sense. And we make this submission very seriously at this stage. It's common cause that the first I choose is exercising his appeal rights as provided for uh, in the Superior Courts Act, as provided for in the Constitution, and um, as provided for even in Section 34 of the Constitution. So it is not clear unless if he is a special type of person who is not allowed to appeal, unlike other human beings. And uh, there's no case that has been made for that. <clears throat> this uh, gratuitous insult of uh, ulterior motive and Stalingrad and delays and so on is not borne out by the evidence before your lordship. I don't know what happened in other courts. But before this court, my lord, uh, Mr. Zuma has consistently done everything in his power for this matter to proceed. On the 21st and 22nd of September, while he is entitled to be sitting here when we were doing the Section 106, he gave your lordship permission. He waived his rights. Those were the words that were used. He waived his rights to be in court so that the matter may proceed. Today he has done the same thing. It does not seem to me that this court has much of a discretion, if it has one at all, to deny those appeal rights statutorily ordained, unless perhaps in the clearest of cases where there is an abuse of rights. The appeal process should be allowed to run its course. Mr. Zuma has challenged many decisions adverse to him in the past, usually invoking the entire appeal process to the highest courts in this land and in many instances has been unsuccessful, which resulted in, an in, resulted in inevitable and unfortunate delays. He is also on record through previous counsel representing him that he will continue to exercise all rights available to him. But the exercise of those rights, as much as they may be viewed with suspicion and distrust from certain quarters as resulting only in delays which only favor him, do not per se amount to an abuse of those rights. A finding of mala fides would require more and clear proof by the state, which I cannot make on the allegations in the present papers alone. The following order is therefore granted. A, the trial is adjourned to 17 May 2022 as a holding date, pending the decision of the president of the Supreme Court of Appeal in respect of Mr. Zuma's application. The adjournment is granted on the basis that if the application in terms of Section 17.2F of the Superior Courts Act has been disposed of by 17 May 2022, the trial shall resume at 10 o'clock on the 31st of May 2022 and shall continue thereafter for the remainder of the second, third and fourth terms of the 2022 court calendar of this court.